You don't want me to talk about the Justice League movie? Come on, guys. So for those of you who don't know, like 10 years ago, I cyberbullied Zack Snyder. You know where a city shouldn't be being destroyed? In the fucking Superman movie. Yeah, that was... It was a different era of me. I was often negative about other people's work online and negative in my life and going through a whole bunch of shit. And I really didn't like Man of Steel. But should I have done that to another artist who was just doing his vision? Probably not. Probably actually an asshole move in, in hindsight. Kind of kind of like... A Mary Sue is a character who's too good at stuff. So then, you know, I, I sort of then had this association with the character Superman because on the day Chronicle came out, the movie I wrote Chronicle, I released uh, The Death and Return of Superman. He throws Doomsday to like the bottom of a lake. Superman's like, I guess that's taken care of. He flies away. Yeah, because I, I wanted to introduce myself to the world, not just as a screenwriter, but as a filmmaker and a creator and someone who is an artist and will always do this no matter what. And it, I'll do it in backyards, you know, I, I love it. And that's how I wanted to like introduce the idea of me to the world. Uh, at the time I was an arrogant, obnoxious asshole, but I was very enthusiastic. You know, I started to become a pretty successful screenwriter. And around that time, DC first approached me to work with a guy named Greg Pak to do a revamp for the new 52 of the death and return of Superman. And it was the most exciting thing in the world to me because it was like a dream. It was a fucking dream. I get to write Superman. I'm a kid who got kicked out of high school, learning disabilities, emotional problems, like trouble with making friends. I was in special school and my, my dad was like famous, but like I couldn't even really tell for most of my childhood because I was just manic and crazy all the time. So I, you know, by the time I was like 19 and living in Davie, Florida, going to Tate's Comics every week, uh, I never thought I would be a screenwriter or become successful in any way. I thought I was going to be John Landis's em embarrassing loser son. And maybe I, maybe I am, but I don't care. Ultimately, DC chose to not do the Death and Return of Superman that I wanted to do, um, not because my version wasn't good, but because they decided to just not do that whole thing, as I understand it, and do some other thing where it was a comic, a new comic every week. Yeah, the new 50, that whole thing. But I still loved my idea for the death and return of Superman. I was really proud of it. And at the time I was directing a movie and I just had uh, my assistant and a camera guy film me do the pitch for my comic, Death and Return. I'm nervous about this. Because when I do a pitch, if I've, if I've written it down, I can do a pitch off the top of my head, but if I've written it down, looked at it, I have that in here. So what was cool is that I got to sit there and talk for 40 minutes and I told the whole story. Breaks through, flies into Metropolis, sees Doomsday, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Doomsday goes like this. <laughs> and I'd never done that before, just pitch to camera. That felt crazy. And I was like, that was so fun. And I put it online and people liked it. So then I had some movies come out where I had like embarrassing reactions to bad reviews and I became very about like, well, the movie doesn't necessarily represent the script, which I was right about, but like not the hill to die on on Twitter. It was my moment, you know, to kind of prove it. I, 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 I went after my dream projects, which were a Dirk Gently TV show and a Superman comic. So I did both and I got them both. I, I did uh, a Dark Gently TV show and I did a comic book called Superman, American Alien, which presented a more humanized take of Superman and secretly functioned as the Bildungsromain back door to something called the Kryptonian Epic, which I intended to write eventually for DC, but hadn't really thought about at the time, sort of put it off into the future. My career went on and kind of got bigger and my YouTube presence got bigger and my Twitter presence got bigger. And if for a minute there, there was a lot of momentum. A lot of people caring when I said stupid shit for reasons I can't explain. Cause like I'm a bozo. I, th there's an idea of me as like a Hollywood elite, like snob, arrogant guy. And that's a, I mean, most of what's been said about me, I'm a strange guy. And I think you can tell that from watching my YouTube channel. I always had trouble making friends. I've like, I'm a weird guy. So I never, I, the fact that I could like say on Twitter, like, 
oh, uh, movie bad. And people would be like, Max Landis says movie bad? That makes me hate Max Landis. You know, there was sort of a, a whole, suddenly a host of people hating me who I'd never met before. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And that resentment bled into my real life because at the time I was a jackass. I, you know, I, I was, you know, on the BPD spectrum and bipolar and not medicated. I'd been in therapy for years, but I was still sort of zipping around all the time. I'd, I'd do tweets like Trump. Remember when Trump would do like 30 tweets in a row and it was like, this guy's losing it. I would do tweets like that, but about movies. I would do like 40 tweet long negative movie things. And I just think, oh, I think of if I saw a guy doing that now, now I'm 35, if I saw me at even 29, I would be like, Ugh. like see a guy just shitting endlessly, a screenwriter shitting endlessly on other people's movies. Ugh, fuck that. I'd be miserable. You know what I do with Glass Planet now literally is just to help support other screenwriters and make them feel good and confident about their ideas. And that's like been a pursuit in my life now. But for years when I was doing this regarding Clark and this, let me tell you, I'm Max Landis and I'm so smart. And let me tell you all about some kind of bullshit. So uh, ultimately I got cyberbullied, and it made me realize cyberbullying was wrong. I was already on that path. I was trying to cut negativity out of my life because my own bullshit asshole behavior, both online and in real life had like cost me a lot of friends and had very real consequences. And so I'd like done all these changes in my life. And then I got cyber bullied. I was like, the, wow, the world is going to kind of a dark place. So that sums up my relationship to Superman. Oh wait, there's one more thing. There's another weird connection between me and Zack Snyder's DC Universe that I should mention beyond me being a jerk about it online. There's another weird one, which is that Jesse Eisenberg, who was in my movie, American Ultra, that's very, very, very good movie. If you just make different, have it have a different score. Trust me, if it had a different score, it's such a good movie. Come on, guys. But so I had hung out with Jesse Eisenberg a few times on the set of American Ultra right after he'd been cast to be Lex Luthor in Batman versus Superman. And what I talked about with Jesse on set was that. And I would talk to him and tell him, Lex Luthor is this, that, this, that. And I would talk and pitch him Lex. And we took a walk around Bourbon Street, I remember, during the shooting of American Ultra. And I have no idea if this is real or true or if this affected him or if it was subconscious, but other people noticed it. And then I was like, really? And then I watched it. Yeah, Lex Luthor in Batman versus Superman has my hair from regarding Clark and acts and talks like me. These exceptional beings live among us, the basis of our myths, gods among men upon our, our little blue planet here. He has my mannerisms as done by Jesse Eisenberg. And I went, what? And people online were like pointing it out to me. And I was like, what the fuck? Holy fuck, like this is weird. And I wondered like, did Snyder see regarding Clark and this is sour grapes or does Jesse Eisenberg maybe is inspired or I don't know. And I didn't want to like text Jesse cause we weren't, we, we knew each other, but we weren't like friends. So I was in this weird spot where I was like, all these people were like, hey, Lex Luthor's you. And I was like, yeah, that's obviously true. I, uh -huh. Around around this time, I had like got shaved the side of my head and I had rainbow hair. And it was like, how, someone noticed this cry for help. So now we're caught up to modern day. Okay, Whoop. modern day. You know, people say on here in the comments sometimes like, Max, you seem different. You seem calmer. You seem like, and yeah, I am different. It's cause I took like a, like a two year break from posting on here to like get my shit together. People grow and change. And what's weird is that you guys have followed me since my early twenties, some of you, which is like nuts. When I was a little kid, we didn't have cell phones. Now I have like 22 year old guys who are like working on TV shows being like, Chronicle was my inspiration to be a screenwriter. And I go like this, am I a thousand years old? I'm kidding, I'm joking. I'm intensely grateful and not humble bragging. I'm being serious because this 
mentality about my opinion of this movie stems from this like fake ass pseudo celebrity I've had that has really only ever hurt my life. As they did this four hour R-rated Zack Snyder Justice League movie. And the Whedon version, I would describe as misguided, but I wouldn't describe it as any less misguided than Man of Steel or Batman versus Superman. And when I say misguided, I'm not criticizing it as bad or good. I'm just saying that these movies create really polarized reactions in people in the way that you don't see with the Marvel movies. And that's because they've allowed Zack Snyder, who's an auteur, to have like a real heavy hand in shaping their DC universe. And he's kind of the right guy for that because his mythic vision is sort of the old school DCU, this sort of like thing with all of these empty signifier characters who are like, I, I am Aquaman. <laughs> you know, like people like Hawkman. I feel like Hawkman is a Zack Snyder character because Hawkman, who's Hawkman? How many Hawkmen have there been? Four? And like four Hawk girls, and sometimes they're aliens and sometimes they're not? Yeah, is that in the four hour cut? Tell me that's in this four hour movie. Hawkman, Thanagar, the whole shit. You don't want me to talk about the Snyder cut. Really, I think the crazy thing about this dark, violent, creepy superhero god epic, the most impressive thing is that it's an act of tremendous love. Like, Jesus Christ, when was the last time we were allowed into a director's process like this? Would you have ever thought, would you have ever thought the passion of fans could affect studio filmmaking and allow a corporate enterprise to give total artistic freedom to someone who just loves it that much that he'd come back and do it again? I mean... I don't like the way Zack Snyder portrays Superman, but at this point, Zack Snyder kind of is Superman. That aspect of it is just so cool. The, just as an artist, like what a flex. Oh, you have your big corporate bullshit directive of what the movie is supposed to be? No, I think Batman says fuck and everything's weird. What do you think about that motherfuckers? Everyone loves it. I saw it's getting great reviews. Like, just artist to artist, I like want, I wish I could like hug him. Like, wow, fuck, dude. Like, that's everything good about the film industry that it can be is this giant celebration of story and passion. That can still happen now in the digital age. What a, what a great message to take away for the world. I'm so over these videos on YouTube of people with their hot takes. And I used to love them, but all this shit has just started to seem like sour grapes. And I, I've started to feel like people are farming negativity in exactly the same way you see on Twitter and with cancel culture and all this and politics, all the disinformation, all this shit. It's just a different venue for aggression. So whether I like the movie or not, whether I ever see it or not, it's so great that they did it. And that's what I think of that. And you know what? You know what? But fuck the Justice League and Batman vs. Superman of Steel. You know what? I thought Watchmen was pretty good. So there argue about that in the comments. The Guardians of Gahul. I watched that on a plane while I was on Ambien. I was like, oh God, no, oh no, oh Jesus.